tweaking the radius of points. I've now got some track laid on a six road fiddle yard at the back and in order to bring those six tracks down to the two tracks of the running line I've got a pair, well four, curved points uh, of the Pico variety. Now I've got the long radius points um, SL87 uh, curved left hand points but as they come the radius of the points is actually greater than the tightest radius of uh, the curve as it's coming around here so that, that's good because you don't want tight radius and certainly not on points however if I continue my curve with the points I'm not sure if you can see it but I would have the roads coming out here and that would be very difficult. I've got several options. One is to curve the leading in rail here, the running rail, the main line, in further to bring them over. The alternative was actually to make the curve of the points tighter. So this is the curve of the points, two points put together as they come and what you can see is that the radius of that is actually greater than uh, the radius of the curve that I've got on those uh, mainline running rails and by a bit of judicious tweaking on these two points you'll see that what I've been able to do is increase the radius of the points to approximate the actual radius of the curve um, that's running around there so that as it comes round, when I add the points on now, um, I'm going to get some points which come in a little bit tighter. No more tight than the radius of the actual feed-in rail to the points, but allows this to work. These are as supplied. So that's the points as supplied and I'm going to include some still photos to show how it's done but basically it's very very little tweaking of the point itself cuts in the outer rail uh, not in the rail in the webbing that joins the sleepers together and gaps in the webbing on the inner one you may not need both because very little tweaking of these points and it's easier to see on a still photograph but I'll just try a video so very little tweaking just the gentlest of tweaking has brought these in usually you'll find that the inner rail um, is longer than the outer rail at the point where you need to join them uh, so a little bit of rail an eighth of an inch a couple of millimeters has been trimmed off this one and honestly uh, to get that change in radius there. It's a little bit misleading actually the way I've uh, put the points together because on this one uh, I've joined the second point onto the left hand curve and on that one the second point is joined onto the outer one so that is the outermost radius the, on the top pair and this is the innermost radius on the bottom pair but even so I think you can see that the actual curvature in that point now is greater and also in that point is greater it remains to be seen what impact that has and there are people who hand build points and I take my hat off to them marvelous bits of engineering but with just some cuts in the webbing of non flexible track these are pico points the thing to watch is that if you try and put too much bend in this area then you will get separation of the pivot points. Uh, I've already experimented with that. The other thing that's happening is the tie bar is at a bit of an angle. However, the cutaway in the outer rails, the running rails, is sufficient that the switch rails go into it okay. Uh, that tie bar is much more in line, indicating there's less shift 
due to the curvature but there's definitely a shift there but it does still operate so I'm at the maximum that you can safely get with this point um, and it has done very little in terms of individual movement at individual sleepers so later we'll see if that works and if trains run over it okay.